I'm Robin with Oxy Drying, and I am cleaning this uh, basement area, this bedroom here, uh, and there's a closet over there. This uh, big, I guess, family room, we'll call it. And I actually have a set of stairs over here to over here to do as well. This carpet is uh, about five, it's five years old apparently, and it's really very deteriorated. The uh, you can, I don't know if you can see it, but the yarn is really mushing together. It's polyester. Uh, and uh, I think the, there was a younger couple living here in the basement. The, older, the owner of the house, the older lady lives upstairs, and that's her son and, and daughter-in-law that living, are living down here, I guess, for the last few years. And So I guess it's been pretty well lived in for five years, and the steps aren't particularly, are particularly bad looking, actually. But anyway, let's uh, give it a clean. Um, I have cleaned under the two couches and put them back already. And I am cleaning. I'm applying my cleaning solution using a hog hair fiber pad. And this is a pretty new one, so it's got, it's really biting in. And I find that they work very well um, on uh, polyester carpets. And the concern, of course, would be, is it too aggressive? And the uh, answer is, I have never actually uh, found that to be the case. Um, but um, there are certain, certain circumstances where I would, I would go back to using a white fiber pad just to be careful. But I, so far, anyway, um, the last couple of years, I guess, now I've been using uh, hog's hair fiber pads. And uh, I've never had any... Um, been able to see any obvious issue at all. Uh, I think that the thing is that what makes the hog's hair fiber pad work so well is the hog's hair. It is an organic, it is actual hog's hair, so it's an organic uh, fiber that's woven into the into the fiber pad, uh, but the um, synthetic fibers of the carpet are still going to have greater uh, strength than the hog's hair. Uh, so, anyway, so far I've never seen anything that would indicate to me that there's any kind of a, an issue. So, I know that would be the concern. Uh, certainly, when I first, when the idea was first suggested to me, uh, using a hog's hair, I was hesitant, of course, but then I started using it, and well, I've said this before, if you've never, if you're using a rotary machine and you've never tried the hog's hair fiber pad, I guarantee you, it'll blow your mind. It, it, they just work so very, very well on almost every carpet. So it's my number one fiber pad of choice. Um, and uh, as far as cleaning goes, they, it will out clean a brush. Uh, the places where I would use a brush is when I'm on the more the lo really long plush type carpets where I really want to um, get down into the urn. Um, so that's where I would use a brush. And in some cases, if it's really bad soil wise, I would use a brush and then go over with a fiber pad, the hog's hair fiber pad. And, and go that route. That would be a three-step process, which I rarely find I need to do. Um, now, in this case, I am uh, the carpet in, in the high traffic areas really is quite soiled. Uh, although there's only a couple of really obvious stains, what I determined to do uh, was I have I added um, revive rocket. Uh, to my solution at four ounces per gallon to give it the advantage of the uh, delimonene or the citrus anyway uh, as well as the peroxide uh, because the uh, polyester fiber is uh, really absorbed oils well enthusiastically uh, and that is one of the uh, challenges that we face when cleaning polyester so having the citrus 
um, will benefit as far as dealing with the oils that are present often. Anyway, so that's why I went that route. I usually go that, I usually boost in that way, that way rather than increase the uh, Nanomax, which may have been, um, may work just as well anyway, but that's generally the way I go. I did give it a light free spray with my trigger sprayer with a suspend free spray and the obvious traffic lanes, just a very light. Um, I don't want to uh, get it over wet. Which reminds me of something I wanted to mention. Um, sometimes um, guys will suggest to you, if you're using a pad method like this, whether it be uh, OP or uh, rotary, some guys will take their pads and they will put them into a bucket of water or whatever and obviously saturate them totally and then uh, bring them out and put them on the carpet and start cleaning the carpet that way. I've never done that. Um, that thinking comes from back in the days, uh, well, um, uh, ChemDry. Uh, they would do that. Um, in fact, they would, uh, and usually what they have is uh, one of those mop buckets. This is actually kind of bonnet cleaning. They put the the bonnet, which is usually the loopy cotton bonnet, into the bucket, the squeezy bucket uh, for the um, mop, and then you put it into the, what do they call that thing, the tray there, and squeeze out the excess, and go ahead and start cleaning the carpet with this um, cotton bonnet, which is now actually saturated with water. Um, my thinking right from the very beginning was that that would not make much sense because what we're trying to do is we're trying to transfer the soil off of the carpet fiber and into the pad and uh, if your pad or your bonnet um, I don't call them bonnets I call them pads but your pad um, you want it to be drier than the, than the carpet you're cleaning because uh, wet is attracted to dry. So if you see somebody doing that, um, don't assume that's the correct way to do it. That's old school thinking. Um, and there's absolutely no, there's no advantage to doing that. I really don't see why anybody would, would, would do that. I mean, uh, here I am actually applying the, the cleaner, the primary cleaner, onto the carpet fiber with my machine and scrubbing it in but at the same time I'm controlling exactly how much is being applied to every area of the carpet by uh, controlling the flow with my valve here. It's never on full bore in case you're wondering. It's on intermittently. All I need to do is keep that fiber pad down damp enough to uh, clean the carpet, not over wet the carpet. I recently did a video where I was explaining an issue with a commercial carpet and uh, I kind of addressed this um, shower feeding as opposed to spraying on, on the carpet. And in that particular case, I was explaining, that was a my last video, I think, I explained that, how in my thinking the um, shower feeding was giving me the benefit of really um, precise control of the water or the solution onto the carpet because I didn't want to wash the soil into the backing. But here's the way to look at it. We can't clean the carpet without using water. Water is our friend and water is our enemy. And that's my, has always been my thinking about this. Uh, I gotta move my power. Um, we can't clean without getting the carpet wet, but we can't clean when we get the carpet over wet. So there's a balance. And that's a little bit 
uh, tricky to achieve um, if you're not used to it. But once you get the hang of it, uh, you'll, you'll get it. I mean, I've, I've said it before. And I know there's guys that are watching my channel that have learned and listened to what I've been saying and I've been learning how to do this. And, it, and it's a tricky... Um, it's not really tricky. That's not the right word. It's, it, it takes a bit of practice. Um, and the, the secret is this. If you clean your carpet, I clean our carpet, and, you know, say I clean... I'm going to clean this room. So after I finish it, and I then I go over it with a dry cotton pad, and then I immediately go over it with my vacuum. If I... When I'm vacuuming, I vacuum the whole room to post-vacuum this carpet. If, when I finish post-vacuuming this carpet, or this job, okay, so let's say this job, um, if I have water, actual liquid, on that brush roll, then I know that I got the carpet wetter than I should have. Okay, there's your balance, there's your uh, measurement. So, it's, we, we have a tendency when we're doing this to think um, that adding more water or add more solution will clean more so and it, it, it's not the way this works we're not cleaning with a we're not flushing the carpet this isn't steam cleaning we're doing the set method soil extraction transfer technology and what that means is that the primary tool for removing the soil from the carpet is actually the agitation you, all you need is enough solution on the carpet to provide the emulsion emulsifying so that it will dissolve and lift the soil into suspension but don't make the mistake of putting so much water on the carpet that you are washing the dirt into the backing that's only going to cause you problems and it isn't going to help you clean. It will hinder you cleaning. So, that's my thoughts on that. So the customer was telling me that she was not at all happy with the way this carpet was performing and she had the store that uh, installed it come out <clears throat> and restretch the carpet. You can see there's ripples all around here. She said that they took out three inches along the wall, which is not surprising. And I think one of the reasons that this, is, this happens <clears throat> is that often the installers when they do a great big room, this is a pretty big room actually, uh, they're just gonna kick it in. Whereas what they really should be doing is it, if it gets beyond a certain um, size, and I'm not even sure what that size would be, but anyway, they, they, they really need to uh, use a power stretcher, put some real uh, effort into putting some tension on the carpet. Kicking isn't gonna be enough in a lot of cases. I cannot kick the carpet. I have tried it a few times and I get about three kicks and I'm done because I, I just, my knee just doesn't, <laughs> doesn't want to tolerate it. I've installed carpet though, but not where I had to really do any kicking. <clears throat> Did a really good job on my, in my mudroom on my steps. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful job. I understand how to do it. I just, I don't have the knees, I guess. <clears throat> Although my knees don't bother me normally. But when I use the kicker, I just, oh man. I'm, I live for two or three days. <laughs> so anyway, this this is coming up really well. I don't know if you can uh, tell. There was a really obvious stain right over here, by the way. You probably noticed that as I went over it. Uh, I don't know what it was, but it was a color stain. And, a, and I had pre-treated it with a suspend, and the suspend has, uh, I've got 3,000 ppm of uh, 
CLO2 in the suspend now. I've been doing that for the last couple of months, I guess. <clears throat> I realized that if I'm ever going to put it on a spot, I might as well have the CLO2 in there and get the benefit of that as well. So, <clears throat> <clears throat> seems to be working. So I'm not actually going all the way up to the edges, as you're probably noticing, because I don't need to, um, but I will be doing that with the Iron Man pad. But nobody's walked around the edges, so. Um, <clears throat> now I wanted to go over this right over here. This was the most deteriorated spot in the bedroom. But it really is cleaned up really nicely. You can really see the the uh, the fibers are fused together here. See, now I did want to go over one other spot over here. Where was it? Right there. video so thanks for watching and have a good day